I'm ready for, for this morning. I'm ready for this service. Well, we've been talking about faith for the last few weeks. We're in our fifth week of our faith series. And I, I've been enjoying these messages. I have been built by these messages myself, even my own, you know, studying the word and looking into the scriptures and seeing certain truths and elements coming out of these messages of faith. It's been amazing. And also, I believe we're in a season of faith as a church, as a people. I believe that faith must be built in the season. There is a pioneering work that God is doing through the church, even through us as a boundless, as the boundless church. And I believe that God wants to build faith. God wants to release faith and I believe that faith is going to work for us and it's going to release the impossible. Amen. It's going to do the impossible. It's going to help us and empower us to achieve what um, man, man said we cannot do, what our statistics said we cannot do, what people said we cannot do, what our own personal limitations said we cannot achieve. Through faith, we will accomplish and achieve the impossible. Amen. Well, this morning, I'm going to get into my message. This is the fifth installment of our faith series. And the title of my message this morning to you, are you ready for this? It's going to be real. It's going to be powerful. It's a combination of, I believe, both the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of faith that will flow today. It's going to be very enlightening and it's going to help you this morning to, to move your life forward. This morning, I want to speak to you and the subject of my message this morning is friends with faith. Friends with faith. Yes, I'm going to be talking about faith in relation to friendships and relationships and the company of people that you surround yourself with. Let me start off by saying this. The journey of life can be frustrating when you decide to do it alone. Life was never designed for you to do it alone. Doesn't matter how independent or how strong you are, life was never designed for you to do it alone. Even in the church world, some people um, consider themselves, or actually by nature, they are very prophetic in a sense and um, love being alone, love spending lots of time with God. But even in that, in that having such a nature, it's not healthy to be alone, to do life alone. In fact, doing life alone is setting yourself up for failure. We were designed to be relationally connected. We were designed to have friends, to have people in our lives, family in our lives. Now, with saying all of this, that we, are, we were never designed to be independent, to be alone, and to, you know, to be, um, to be, can we call it like lonely rangers? By saying all of this, or with saying all of this, I want to say this as well. Just because you are, we're not designed to be alone doesn't mean that we should have anyone in our lives or anyone in our personal lives. I truly believe that when it comes to relationships and building relationships and friendships, I believe that we must build intentionally building relationships in your life means building intentional relationships and intentional friendships that build our faith in God and fuels our dreams and our purposes you know our journey of faith can be so much easier when we build with the right people and when we build the right people around our lives your ability to build the right people around your life will determine the level of success that you will achieve. You know, Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 says this, One who has unreliable friends will soon come to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. The Bible says one who has unreasonable, unreliable friends will soon come to ruin. The most tragic thing in your life is to have unreliable and defective relationships and friendships. Instead of greater faith, instead of improved character, instead of fulfilled purpose becoming a reality in your life, if you have all the wrong or unreliable people, as the Bible said in your life, all of those will soon come to ruin. 
I like what the Bible says. It says that those who have unreliable um, people in their life will soon come to ruin. So maybe you'll have these unreliable people in your life and it won't immediately happen. You won't immediately see the, the, the negative impacts of their, of their relational connection to you. But the Bible says that soon, soon, there's a time frame connected to this thing. Soon, there will be ruin that will come to your life. So unreliable, unreliable, unreliable friends will bring ruin to your life. But the Bible says, it says there are relationships that will lead to ruin, but then it also says it doesn't have to be like that. Because unreliable friends will lead to ruin. It says, but there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So they are out there, they are good friends. In fact, in your life and in your world, you do have access to good friends. Some of you have family. And many times the family in our life, and we don't choose family. Family is given to us. But they are intentional relationships that you can continue to build in your life. And you, you have a choice. Let me say, you have access to good friends. You might, you might be saying, all my life I've just had, I've had unreliable people around me. Well, the Bible says there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Now we know that, that Jesus also called that friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But I want to talk to you about real people today that are that, that God has given you, that God wants to bring into your life. Real in the sense of they are with you. They'll walk with you. They'll be with you. And so the Bible says that there are true relationships out there that will build your faith, that will encourage you, and that will see God's plan and purpose fulfilled in your life. I want to turn your attention very quickly to 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 6 to 7. 1 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 6 to 7. This is the story about Jonathan. Jonathan and his armor bearer. In fact, all the Israelites, the Bible said, they are hiding away in holes. And the Bible says that they are hiding because of the Philistines. But then there were two people, Jonathan and his armor bearer. And the Bible says, Jonathan gets the stirring in his heart to go into the Philistine camp and attack the Philistines. So this is what he says to his armor bearer in 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, and Jonathan says to his young armor bearer, come, let's go over to the outposts of the uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer, his, his armor bearer said. Go ahead, I am with you, heart and soul. This is such a powerful story right here about Jonathan and his armor bearer. We're seeing that, that Jonathan wants to go attack the Philistines. He says to his armor bearer, let's go. The Lord will give us this victory. Whether it be by many or by few. And his armor bearer replies, do all that's in your mind. Another version says, do all that's in your heart. He says, I am with you, heart and soul. Everything within me, I am with you. Let me open up this, this portion of scripture by saying this. In life, you will either have friends of fear or friends of faith. In life, you will either have friends of fear or friends of faith. This man, this armor bearer was clearly a friend of faith. He was clearly a friend of faith. And maybe just to give you a little bit of, and help you a little bit, let me give you three differences between a friend of fear and a friend of faith. Number one, a friend of fear is a friend, a friend of fear is someone who talk, who talks, okay, let me say, a friend of fear is someone who talks you out of your dreams and faith steps. But a friend of faith is one who affirms your dreams and your desires. The difference between a friend of fear and a friend of faith is a friend of fear will talk you out of your dreams and all the faith steps you want to take. But a friend of faith will affirm your dreams. 
a friend of faith will affirm the desires on the inside of you. Here we see this armor bearer affirming. He says to Jonathan, do all that is in your heart, Jonathan. This, this desire you have, this dream, this vision you have, this assignment you want to take on of going into the Philistine camp, defeating these Philistines, wiping them out. He says, I am with you. He affirms the desires. He affirms the dreams in his heart. This is what a friend of faith does. And if you have a friend of fear in your life, I'm telling you, a friend of fear will talk you out of your dreams, will talk you out of the desires in your heart. A friend of fear will always, when you say, I want to do this, I want to do that, they will always paint the picture of why, the worst case scenario, will always paint the picture of why you should never do it. Now, I know these friends who are wise, they are friends who want to give you wisdom, and that's fine, and we know this place for that, but you know when someone carries that spirit on them, when someone has, a, a, when someone possesses a mindset of fear when they've been wired when they have when their thought processes have been wired to fear always and fear in everything they do that type of person will talk you out of your dreams talk you out of your desires talk you out of the will of god talk you out of that faith steps you want to take that person will talk you they will they will say also they will always talk down what god is doing they will always discourage you when you have the stirring on the inside of you to take you on to take on new things to do um, what god has called you to do or sometimes it might even seem like Stepping out in faith. But a friend of faith, a friend of faith will affirm your dreams. A friend of faith will even give wisdom. A friend of faith will even navigate you through the process. A friend of faith. A friend of faith is someone who affirms your dreams and affirms your desires and speaks life into it and calls out the potential and calls out the purpose and says, I can see you doing this. Number two, a friend of fear becomes insecure and intimidated when you're growing and thriving. But a friend of faith celebrates you when you're winning. Can I say that again? A friend of fear is someone who becomes intimidated when you're growing and when you're thriving. Someone who becomes insecure and intimidated when you're growing and you're thriving. But a friend of faith is someone who celebrates you when you're winning. This is one of the ways you can identify a friend of fear. Is when they're always insecure and intimidated. As soon as you're doing something, something comes in their heart. They get this attitude, or or, or they will they will speak to they will speak to someone else about what you are doing, and they will they will you know, they will downplay it, or they will always like like oh she's doing this, he's doing this, but I don't think. I don't want to get into the details. Friend of fear is someone who downplays what you are doing, who always discourages what you are doing. They, 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 they're intimidated. They're insecure about themselves. And so, and so when you're growing, when you're thriving, it makes them feel smaller. Most times they're never smaller. It's the insecurity and the intimidation that makes them feel smaller. It's like David. David is winning. Saul becomes intimidated. Saul is the king. David is a shepherd boy bringing food to his brothers. But he becomes intimidated and becomes insecure because of David's victories, because of people celebrating David. So uh, there, there, there is... There's an insecurity that comes upon a friend of fear, but a friend of faith celebrates you at all times. A friend of faith will speak well of you, not just to you, because we all know, we all know, people will speak well to you, but they don't always speak well of you. Amen. Listen to this. If someone can talk to you about someone else, then they're talking to someone else about you. <laughs> if someone can talk to you about someone else in a way that discourages and downplays and paints just a bad picture about that person, I'm telling you, that same person, that same person, they will talk to someone else about you as well. You can't trust someone with a big mouth. 
I'm telling you, you can't trust someone with a big mouth. And they always come to you in confidence. <laughs> they always come to you in confidence. You know, I just, you know, I'm just saying this out of concern, you know, out of compassion. I'm just saying this out of love. I'm just, look, sometimes you just don't need to say anything. <laughs> a friend of fear. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in there very quickly. But a friend of fear is someone who is intimidated and insecure, but a friend of faith is someone who celebrates you. And they speak well of you. They speak great of you. They, 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 they try to bring out the pearls and the potential and the, the, the greatness in you, even before people. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, if, number three, a friend, of, a friend of fear will walk away from you, but friends of faith will walk with you. Do you know what? That, that armor bearer, when David, I um, mean, Jonathan said, um, let's go into the Philistines camp, let's take out the Philistines, that, that armor bearer could have, could have discouraged. He had, listen to me, a friend, a friend, a friend, a close relationship, an associate, or even family, even family, because they are the ones close to you. They can talk you out of what God wants to do. Imagine this man going to, to, to Jonathan and saying, Jonathan, I don't think we must go into the Philistine camp. Look how Saul and all the armies are hiding. How do you think you're going to make a difference? Saul is a king. Saul has all this army. Your father has all these armies. They've got multitude of foot, soul, foot soldiers. They have chariots. They have horses. You man alone. And you want to go take out the Philistines. Are you mad? You must use common sense. This will never happen, man. And so they will talk common sense into you. know, sometimes common sense uh, does make sense. Sometimes common sense makes sense to us, but it makes no sense to God. Because God is most times, when he calls you to do something, it's outside of common sense. Faith doesn't operate. <laughs> faith, faith, listen to me, when faith comes and God gives you a word, many times it defies common sense. You know, many people talk about balance in the scriptures. But let me tell you today, there is very little balance when it comes to the people of faith and our heroes of faith. A lot of things that they did had no balance. It was actually very extreme. People always fighting for balance. No, you got to have balance. You know, you got to have wisdom. You gotta, yeah, most people that say, let's use wisdom, are people who are not really wise. They are people who are fearful. And so when people who are wise come to you, acknowledge what they're saying. Because the Bible says, when, we, when the wise listen, the Bible says when a wise man hears a wise man, he becomes wiser. And so when you have wisdom, operating in the spirit of faith, you have wisdom. When a wise man speaks, you know. But you also know when a, fear man, a fearful man speaks. So sometimes fear masquerades itself around wisdom. So people say they're coming to you in the name and the spirit of wisdom, but actually they're coming to you from the root of fear. And instead of actually painting and giving you true wisdom on how to approach the situation, maybe giving you a blueprint, a strategic plan on how to approach this thing, be in the spirit of faith, but be wise, they plant and they sow fear and they cripple you out of fulfilling God's plan for your life. But I want you to know today that a friend of faith Hmm. A friend of faith is like this armor bearer. He will stand with you. He will walk with you. He won't walk away with away from you. Amen. He won't walk away from you. He won't walk away from you just because there's a just because there's opposition and just because there's this this great challenge ahead. He doesn't walk away from you. He walks with you, just like this man. He says, "I'm with you, heart and soul, Jonathan." With all that is within me, I am walking with you. A friend of fear will walk away from you when it comes to when it comes to fulfilling an assignment and taking on some big things. Sometimes they don't want to be associated with, with this because the fear of failure. Sometimes people won't be associated with you because they know or they have this fear that you're going to fail. So they de-associate themselves. But I'm telling you, a friend of faith will say, hey. We are with you, heart and soul. It doesn't really matter what happens. We are stepping out. We're going to take on this Philistines. We're getting out of this garrison. We're coming out of this outpost. We're going to go into the camp of the Philistines. And whether we die or whether we make it, he said, 
I am with you heart and soul. This is the nature and the characteristic of a friend of faith. Hallelujah. Friend of faith is with you whether we're winning or whether we're losing. Whether we're making it or whether we're not making it. We're doing, I'm just with you. That's what a friend of faith does. Amen. A friend of faith is with you. Now, let me say this to you this morning. That the subject of friendship and relationships is great. The, friend, the subject of fr- friendships and relationships and uh, is big. It's, it's, it's a very big subject. There's a lot of, lot of truth and a lot, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of work and ground to cover. But I want you to, 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 to be aware and also to keep in mind that we are in a faith series. So a lot of what I'm saying is connecting us back to faith. It's landing us back to faith. It's, it's set in the context of this message of faith. And so while we won't explore all the avenues of friendships here, we will be mainly zooming into friendships in relation to faith. And sometimes we will go off here and there, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, um, I don't want to move outside of the boundaries of that message. Amen. So we'll always relate back to faith. So this is a very powerful, very, very, very powerful story of an armor bearer who, who, who is a type of a friend here and a relationship, a close association. And how the influence of his faith came upon Jonathan. How his affirmation. How you see, if he was if he was fearful, Jonathan, he could have he could have um, stifled, hindered, opposed. He could have he could have um, frustrated or even suppressed the 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 faith and just the the passion inside of Jonathan. But no, he affirmed it. He pushed it. He fueled it. He said, "I'm going to be." Part of fueling this thing and not be part of go and not part of of killing this thing. I'm going to fuel it and not kill it. I'm going to push it and not pull it back. So sometimes you need to be a friend of faith. And maybe you, maybe you've been, maybe you've been looking for a friend of faith, but you've actually been a friend of fear. You've actually just been discouraging people. Maybe it's time for you to rewire your heart, rewire your mind, uh, repent before God, uh, and maybe even go as far as apologizing to someone and say, look, I'm with you. I believe in you. I believe in your dreams. I believe in your purpose. I believe in what God is doing. And we're going to do this heart and soul. Amen. And so, and so these are the differences between a friend of fear and a friend of faith. And there's so many more, but I just decided to touch on those three to encourage you and to help you this morning. Now, I want us to go to this next portion of scripture. We're going to continue to talk about friends of faith. And I want us to turn to the book of Luke chapter 5. We're going to read from verse 17 to verse 20. Luke chapter 5, verse 17 to verse 20. The Bible says, one day, verse 17, Luke 5, 17. One day Jesus was teaching and Pharisees, one day Jesus was teaching and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men carrying a paralyzed man. This is where we're going to start now. The Bible says some men carrying a paralyzed man on a mat tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. Verse 19. When they could not find a way to do this, because of the crowd before the door, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles. So basically, they broke this man's roof. They broke this man's roof to get into this prayer meeting, to get into this church service. I know some of you would call SAPS immediately. Some of you would send out the security and kill that man. But this... And this and kill these four men, but this, this, these four men had a radical faith, and they took this man and they lowered him on the mat through the middle of the crowd and they dropped him right in front of Jesus. The Bible said, and verse twenty, the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, I want you to see this. You need to read the Bible with me. Verse twenty, Luke chapter five, verse twenty. The Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man. Your sins are forgiven. And then we know the story goes on. I'm not going to read. The story goes on in Jesus. And the Pharisees said, but who is this man that, who is this man that blasphemes like this, that he, that he's able to forgive sins? And then Jesus, Jesus read their hearts and their minds. And Jesus said, 
Jesus said, just to prove to you that the Son of Man is able to give, uh, the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins. I will say to this man, get up from your mat and walk. And Jesus said, get up from his mat and walk. And the man was paralyzed, walked away, walked away, forgiven of his sins, healed by the power of God. And he was healed because of these four friends who decided to pick up his mat, take him to the house of Jesus, drop him through the roof, drop him before Jesus so that he can get his miracle. Yeah, this is a powerful story of of the miracle working power of god this is a powerful story of a paralyzed man receiving a healing but we see this miracle became a reality because of the faith of this four men now here in luke chapter 5 it doesn't say four men but we know that the story also occurs in mark chapter mark chapter 2 and in matthew matthew chapter 9 and mark chapter 2 and we know in 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 the other gospels they say that in the other gospel in mark in the book of mark they say that there was four men there was four men that were carrying this paralyzed man so we see a man being healed because of the faith of these four men can i say this to you very quickly it matters who is in your life if you haven't considered this yet, I want you to consider this today. It matters who is in your life. It matters who is in your circle. It matters who you pick the phone up. It matters who you call. Who's that one you pick the phone up every day or every now and then? Who, who are those people that you are calling? Are, are on the other side of that call, are, are they just generating problems? Are they just generating fear? Are they just generating issues? Or on the other side of the phone, are they generating faith are they generating courage are they generating hope are they generating a peace are they generating a joy on the inside of you if not then maybe you should be phoning those people less and you should be finding people who can build your faith you cannot keep on you cannot you cannot continue to expose yourself to relationships and connections that always fuel you with for, for fear but in there but expect to live in the in the realm of faith the formula doesn't work. The, 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 the sum doesn't work. It doesn't add up. You need, to, you need to expose yourself to a people of faith, a company of faith. Amen. And so it matters who is in your life. It matters who is journeying with you. Who is journeying with you. The people that you surround yourself with are the people who are, have the ability to influence your life. Who has your ears? Who has your, your eyes? Who has your heart? The voices in your life has access to your heart, has access to your faith capacity, has access to, the, uh, to, uh, has access to um, your life and it has access to, to a place in your mind, in your heart that can either accelerate you or deaccelerate you. Move you to action or keep you crippled and paralyzed in fear. This man would have stayed paralyzed for the rest of his life had these four men not come into his come walk into his walk into his presence and into his life. He would have stayed paralyzed in this condition had these people not walk into his life. And so all you need to move your life forward is to have the right people walk into your life. Maybe it means have the right pastor walk into your life. Have the right church walk into your life amen 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 hallelujah thank you jesus thank you for that thank you for that hand clap emoji out there i'm gonna watch that i'm gonna watch that comments the right the right church in your life the right people in your life and so it matters it matters who is in your life amen as i said earlier on in your life, you'll either have friends of faith or friends, friends of fear or friends of faith. And here, once again in the story, we see, we see these four men functioning in the life of this paralyzed man as a friend of faith. A friend of faith. Now, let me just talk about the story very quickly. The first thing I want to highlight out of this story is this. Number one, we see that these men, these men, they, their one assignment, their one plan when meeting this paralyzed man, their one assignment was to lead this man to Jesus, was to get this man 
into the presence of Jesus. So that he could be forgiven of his sins. So that he could be healed. So that his life could be turned around. When he was healed, the Bible said he stood up and, and he started praising God. He started celebrating. This is what happens when people come into the presence of Jesus. They are forgiven. They are healed. They are delivered. They are set free. The praises of God begins to, begins to live on the inside of them. The first point I want to make you out of the story is this. Real friends, real friends don't lead you away from Jesus. Real, flen, real friends ah, mm, don't lead you away from Jesus. Real friends lead you to Jesus. The entire assignment of these men was to lead this paralyzed man to Jesus. This should be what a friend of faith does in your life. Or this is the type of friend of faith you should be in someone else's life. Lead them to Jesus. A real friend in your life will lead you to Jesus. Now, you might be saying, but my, my, I, I've got a good friend, he's not Christian. Well, is that person leading you away from God? Is that person discourage you, discouraging you from serving God? Is that person um, opposing? Is that person coming against your faith, coming against your walk with God, your relationship? If not, then you have a good friend. Then you have a good friend. But if that person is an opposition, a stumbling block, but yet you want to hold on to that friendship, it means that you're trying to hold on to a friend of fear. All that person is generating on the inside of you is insecurity, unstable. They, 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 uh, they, 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 they're knocking you off your, your security in God. Or they're opposing it. Let me rather say that. People shouldn't be able to knock you off it, but people have the ability and influence to, 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 to move you into such a position. And so, and so a real friend leads you to Jesus, not away from Jesus. And we see this man. The assignment was, let's take him to Jesus. Let's get, them, let's get this man to the house. Let's get him into the presence of Jesus. Let's get this man restored and we know when he got there he was saved he was forgiven he was healed he was he, he, he threw his mat away his past was washed away he had a fresh start and a new beginning your true friends will always lead you closer to god if you have friends that's turning you away from jesus turning you away from god then you need to consider whether that person should be a friend in your life amen i'm, I'm talking to you today yes i'm talking to you Talking to you. Ah, oh, you see, I don't like the church because they always want to. I am not being religious. I am not being a freak. I am not being weird. I'm saying, who is in your personal space? What level do they have in your life? How much influence are you giving them in your life? I'm not saying you don't need to, all your friends need to be Christian friends. In fact, it's good not to have Christian friends. It's good to have some other people you can also influence and impact. Walk with some other people. Amen. Don't be a weirdo. Don't be a freak. Everyone who knows me knows what I, what I believe in, what I preach and what I teach. We're here to be influencers. Amen. But as soon as people are influencing you away from your relationship with God, you need to reevaluate what's happening there. Amen. If they're always leading you down a, a dark road. Uh, uh, always... Uh, especially people who know you've, you've taken a walk of faith. Some of you got saved. You got washed with the blood of Jesus. You have a relationship with God. But your friends today are still always, they're always tempting you into doing all sorts of other things. Now you can't change them. You can't stop them from doing that. But, but you have a decision whether they're going to have that amount of influence in your life still. If they're still going to be that close to you. You have that power. So, so you can't always change the way they're going to act. But you can change the way you will respond to the relationship. Oh, strong talk. Amen. This is not a message saying, cut the world out. Ah, cut the world out. You shouldn't be. No, that's not, that's not what this message is. This message is this. How much influence? What is that percentage? Should they have so much influence in your life if they are turning you away from Jesus? Amen. The second point I want to make to you this morning is this. A friend of faith will journey with you in your paralyzed state. This man was paralyzed and they were willing to take this man to Jesus. 
Isn't it interesting how people are only willing to walk with the perfect and not the paralyzed? Many of us are only willing to walk with the perfect and not the paralyzed. And sometimes we have to just commit again and say, I'm willing to walk with the paralyzed. I'm willing to walk with a broken person. I'm willing to walk with someone who is, who is, who is struggling, someone who is dying, someone who is uh, emotionally dying, spiritually dying, someone who is mentally dying, someone who is who's broken, someone who's been shattered, someone who's been paralyzed by life, paralyzed by circumstances. A friend of faith will journey with a paralyzed person, will journey with those in a paralyzed or in a paralyzed state. Let me say this to you, that we will all experience seasons where we need support outside of ourselves. We will all experience and we will hit seasons in our lives where we will need support outside of ourselves. And I want you to know that when you have and when you reach those type of seasons, you've maybe lost, you've maybe lost a loved one, a mother, a father, a husband, a friend, a daughter, a, a close person in your life. You maybe went through a financial crisis. Maybe you, mentally things begin to hit you. Something went down in your life that just that go, that caused you to to break down in your life. In those moments, you need to have friends of faith, because a friend of faith doesn't doesn't um, doesn't throw you when you're in a paralyzed state. A friend of faith will walk with you in a, when you're in a paralyzed state. These men, these men said, "Look, this is a paralyzed man. This man." needs help outside of himself this man is in a season this man we didn't uh, this man is in a season he is he is uh, he, he is in a some people are in a season some people have been like that from birth some people but what, whatever 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 it, it's whatever the case may be if someone is in a paralyzed state and when you are in a paralyzed state friends of faith is needed in that time friends of faith is needed to journey with you and they will journey you back to healing. They will journey with you. They will pick you up. They will say, a friend of faith will come and will say, will say, you paralyzed in the season, but don't worry, we got your back. We'll pick up your mat. We'll pick up the phone. We'll visit you. Let's go out for coffee. Let's pray. I'm fasting with you. I'm believing with you. Hallelujah. What do you need? I'm here to support you. Sharabakat. <laughs> I don't know. I felt that, guys. But a friend of faith will pick you up. Will say, pick, "Let's pick his mat up. Let's pick his. Let's pick up this this man and let's take him to Jesus. Let's walk with him until we find Jesus. And even if it's difficult to find Jesus, because we know when they came to the door, it was a crowd and they couldn't find Jesus. But because these men had faith, the Bible said they were willing to break open. Friends of faith will sometimes go beyond. They will go the extra mile. They will do more than what they were supposed to do, just so that you can get to Jesus. Just so that you can receive your healing. Just so that you can be forgiven. Just so that you can be delivered. Is there anyone out there that says, I need a friend of faith? Or oh, I'm willing. God, I will be a friend of faith to someone in my life. Friends of faith are willing to walk with paralyzed people. And when you're in a paralyzed situation, you need a friend of faith. Hallelujah. I sense that by the Holy Ghost right now. The third point I want to make to you this morning is, I, I feel like I can go, I can run with that, but I don't, ooh, I feel like I can run with that. You've got a journey with paralyzed people, man. Maybe, I know, there's people out there, you've had a season when you were outside of yourself. You needed support outside of yourself. You couldn't help yourself. You were so low. You were drowning. You were falling in a hole. All you needed was just someone to be with you, someone to walk with you, someone to, to greet you, someone to say hello to you, someone to encourage you, someone to pray with you, someone to affirm you, someone to, to just come along your side and say, I'm with you, man. I'm with you, my friend. Number three, a friend of faith. When you have a friend, in your, a friend of faith in your life, Neg negative situations in your life can turn because of 
their faith. Listen to me this morning. Negative, when you have a friend of faith in your life, negative situations in your life can turn because of their faith. Not your faith. The Bible says that Jesus in verse 20, Luke chapter 5 verse 20, the Bible says Jesus looks to these four men and the Bible says he saw their faith. Listen, the paralyzed man is there. Amen. You know what we told a couple of weeks ago? God will do things according to your faith. According to your faith. When you have faith, he told, he told so many people in the scriptures according to your faith. But we see another dimension of faith here. This dimension of faith is not your faith, but this dimension of faith is your friend's faith. And Jesus is showing us here, God is showing us through the scriptures here, that there are certain miracles and breakthroughs, certain seasons in your life where God will heal you, where God will restore you, where God will deliver you, where God will promote you, where God will set you free, where you will experience breakthroughs, where you will experience new seasons, where things will be unlocked on the inside of you. And it won't be because of your faith, it won't be because of what you are doing, but because of a friend's faith, because of a friend's prayer life, because of a friend that was standing with you sometimes there are things that happen in your life and it's got nothing to do with you but it's got to do with those who are praying for you believing for you standing before the courtyards of heaven petitioning for your breakthrough believing god that there would be a mal there will be a mighty outpouring in your life jesus said because of their faith and then he said to the paralyzed man he said he said he saw their faith then he said to the paralyzed man you are forgiven and then he raised the man from that paralyzed condition this man jesus will see the faith of your friends for your life and then he will heal you and deliver you can you see the importance can you see how how important it is and how much it matters who is in your life do you have four men like this who can build your faith can you be someone like this to someone else and be the type of faith that jesus will look at and say because of your faith i will heal your mother because of your faith i will heal your colleague because of your faith i will heal that brother and sister in your church that person in your b group because of your faith i will heal someone else i know that you have faith for yourself i know you have faith for your own family i know you have faith just for maybe your own home but do you have faith for someone else can you take your faith release it for someone else agree with someone else pray with someone else oh you gotta give me an amen because i'm preaching to you this morning and i know that i'm preaching a good word to you this morning because i am challenging you to be a friend of faith but at the same time i'm also giving you wisdom to say find the friends of faith negative situations in your life uh, paralyzed situations there are certain seasons that will paralyze you and knock you out and you won't have the faith to believe you won't have the faith to stand you won't have the faith all you want to do is fall in and cry and weep and and give up and and walk away from from all that god has called you to do and from your peace and from your joy but then a faith comes you see when a lion is bleeding all he needs is another lion to secure him to secure him from the from the predator to secure him from the hyena to secure him from the enemy that's trying to devour him when you are bleeding all you need is another one that will come and patch your wounds up and say my faith will heal you my faith will deliver you my faith will set you free there's a dimension of faith where your faith cannot work for you but God will send the right people in your life to work faith in your life to work faith for you and behalf and on behalf of you oh you got give you got to give God a praise this morning because I believe this is uh, this is a season for you to find friends with faith friends with faith come on knock your just 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 put your hand in your heart and say i will be a friend of faith mm, amen friends of faith negative situations in your life can turn because of other people's faith i want to say this again jesus said he saw their faith and then he looked to the paralyzed man and said your sins are forgiven and be raised up and he raised him up from his paralyzed condition all because of the right people in that man's world with the right people in your world you can enter into God's promoted places you can walk before kings you can fulfill your purpose and dream you can achieve the impossible 
but you need to have friends of faith in your life. Oh, there where you are, won't you give me, won't you give me an emoji? Give God a praise. You know, with this how we talk now, online church. <laughs> Some, you know, people are making fun of us for talking like this, but we got to do this. Give us an emoji, man. <laughs> give the Lord a praise. Come on. Clap your hands. We can hear you clap. We must see you clap. And if you're sitting at home there, like, all, you can take out your phone and give the Lord a praise. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Woo, I sense this. I wish I was in church now. I wish I was with you. I said, Lord, this message, this message, I actually want to preach live. This is what I felt. Because I want, I've just felt like imparting the spirit of faith. But there we are. I want you to lift up your hands. I'm going to pray for you very quickly. Father, this morning, I thank you for the spirit of faith. Right now, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the spirit of faith come upon each and every person. I pray, God, where there's fear, let fear be broken. Let fear be expelled. I put right now that notice upon fear. And I say, release every single man, woman, and child in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, as the word is, as the word came this morning, and even as your people continue to meditate, let faith be built, I pray in Jesus' name. Make out of each and every person a friend of faith. Make out of each and every person, Father, a friend that will believe and encourage and build and dream with. I pray, God, that you would send into your family, God, and these people before me, those listening on this, on this broadcast, I pray, God, that they will find friends of faith. By your divine working, Lord, I pray that you would lead the right people into their lives in this season. Even over the next few weeks and months, God, let there be miracles of new relationships, new connections in Jesus' name. And even their present connections and relations, I pray that let there be a turnaround in the condition of people's hearts and minds. And I pray, God, that you would save and heal and deliver those around them. I pray for homes, that you would deliver and heal homes. Set homes free in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, I release that right now for every single man, woman, and child. I release salvation. I release breakthroughs over your home in Jesus' name. Receive it now. Let it come upon each and every house, God. Salvation miracles. Families will be saved. Uncles, aunts, mothers, fathers, daughters, sons. Let them be saved and deliver them, heal them, set them free in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. We're ever standing in faith for a family member. I pray this morning, God, that, they, that their families would be healed. Whoever's believing like these friends in faith for a family member, for, for a colleague, for an employee, God, an employer, a, a friend, God, an associate, someone in their life, I pray that you would heal that paralyzed person because of their faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everyone who agrees and believes this morning, won't you say amen? And amen. And let's give God the glory. Let's give Jesus all the praise this morning because this is all about Him. This is all about you, Jesus. We give you all of the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. We thank you this morning. We bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, this morning, I'm so glad you connected. I'm so glad that you joined us this morning. And um, I want to encourage you and give an opportunity this morning. If you, if you are built in your faith this morning and you're ready to give, won't you sow a seed? Won't you, won't you invest into the kingdom of God? Won't you be generous this morning? I want you to, I want you to give out of your heart, give out of passion this morning and sow a seed this morning. The bank details will be on the screen. You can also go, um, you can watch this later or go to the boundless or you can find under our give tab, you'll find our giving details there and you can give and help us to build this house, build the church, and get and spread the message of God's word um, to many, many lives. Amen. This is a season of pioneering, a season of taking new territory and new ground, and we're so excited about what God is doing. Well, this morning, have a great Sunday. Have a great week. We are so expecting for what God is about to do, and um, I'm so ready to connect with you um, personally, face-to-face, -face, and have a glorious time in God's presence. Amen. So, amazing. Love you. See you soon.